Spiritual Harvest Ministries. I just wanted to say thank you to the pastors and Spiritual Harvest because some young people nowadays really don't know and I've seen people around me, other people my age, I'm 14 and I've seen other people younger than me around my age do stuff that they're not really supposed to do. Yeah. Now I look at them and wonder what's going on at home? Is their mom, dad teaching them anything? Mm -hmm. You don't know what mom teaches me. Mm -hmm. And I just look around and I see everything. So I just want to say thank you again for taking the time out of their day, week, to teach us yes. and guide us on the right path so yes. we don't end up like those other yes. 13, 14, 15, older, younger teenagers. That Bad company corrupts good character. Let's talk about character. Character is something you do when no one's watching you. So when you close the door on your bedroom, what is your movies? On your movies, Lord find God, but if your mother came in the room, could she watch it with you? If your parent came in the room, could they watch it with you? Good character, good character. Then I will be prosperous and successful. As I said before, God has really been getting me on this about good success or bad success. How do we get there? First of all, we have to have our mindset on God. After we put our mindset and our words begin to follow, then our actions, and then we have good success. Why does he tell us to do this? I have not commanded you to be strong and courageous. Remember that you are an enemy with the world, which means peer pressure. Peer pressure means that mostly everyone else is going the wide road and you go on the narrow road. Oh, which on, means that you sometimes will be caught in a, in a tight place of doing what God tells you to do when no one else is doing it, you will sometimes have to stand alone. It tells you to be strong and courageous. If you look on social media, everything on social media goes, mostly goes against what God is saying to do. They're calling black, white, and white, black. Uh -huh. We are now in those days. There also is going to be a falling away. So you do not be afraid and don't get discouraged. If any of you are lacking wisdom, when I'm under peer pressure, a lot of times people make bad decisions because they don't have wisdom. I want y'all to know, young people, that y'all die too. That's right, Y'all die too. Amen. It doesn't mean that you get old and you die. Well, just make it plain, the Word of God said a disobedient child mm -hmm. will not live his days out upon this earth. We see it happening every day. That's why mothers are crying because they didn't realize their children were going to die before them. By obeying your word. The word of God. Not what you believe. Not what you think is okay. Not about what everybody else is doing. Because I just heard on this week and I'm, I'm going to be just as candid as possible because everything you need. I was sitting and listening to some people talk about it being okay that your child go in and be a part of uh, homosexuality. It's not okay. It's not okay. Why is it not okay? Because God says it's not okay. God says it's not okay. It's not your mama. It's not the people at your church. We're not just ganging up on you. The word of God say it's an abomination. It's not the only thing that's an abomination, but to love someone of the same sex is wrong because God created us to be fruitful and to multiply. You cannot be fruitful and multiply with the same sex. I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. You ain't got no word in your heart so you can't fight. A godly battle. Amen. The only way this battle is going to be won is by 
the word of God. If you're not living a godly life, that's when you start talking ugly to your mom, to your daddy, to those people who are working hard for you. That's when you don't even have a, a, a moment of inkling on the inside of you when you say something bad. You just act like she deserved it. She got what she deserved. That's because you fall up. Because when people love you, they tell you the truth. See all that stuff out there in the world, they lying. They lying because you know why? Because the enemy wants you to go with him. He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy you. How can I do that? By getting in your thoughts. Corinthians 15 and 33. 
Do not be misled. 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 Mm -hmm. Which means you're being led somewhere. Yeah. Being led somewhere. Remember, we're always being led somewhere. Either in a positive way or a negative way, but you are being led. So it says, be not this, be misled. Bad company. Mm. Mm. Let's talk about bad company. Bad company could be in the form of social media. Yes. What are you looking at on social media? At one time when I was, you know, got down with me about Facebook, a lot of my Facebook wasn't godly. So I started putting a lot of godly Facebook so that I started attracting that type on my Facebook. What are you looking at on Facebook? What are you looking at on Snapchat? What are you looking at on Instagram? What are you clicking on? Where's your heart clicked on? That will tell you your bad company. If it's always something about fighting, uh, gossip, bad company, corrupts good character. Let's talk about character. Character is something you do when no one's watching you. So when you close the door of your bedroom, what is your movies? Are your movies glorifying God? When, if your mother came in the room, could she watch it with you? If your parent came in the room, could they watch it with you? Good character. Good character. So bad company corrupts good character. All right? So that's one of the things that I wanted to look at. Another thing with that. As we're looking at these close relationships with ungodly people, because let's go back to school. Walking the halls, I've never, when I'm walking the halls, I always hear all kinds of cuss words. Girls, boys all wrapped up. Go, boy, get your hand off that girl. What, what, pull your pants up. Why are you talking about this? And as I talked to one student just a few minutes ago, if you are listening to that, if you are not saying anything not to say it, or you watching it, then what are you doing? You are also put, partaking that and putting that in your spirit as well. Amen. Again, we're talking about being where the silence call. Amen. Ungodly. When we are an ungodly influence, it can cause us to crash on the rocks. So how do we get out of those types of situations? What do we need to do? Joshua 1, 8 through 9. Let's turn there. 8 through 9. Amen. And it says this. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. In other words, I need to be Edifying God in my conversation. Yeah. God, it doesn't take go around, thus says the Lord. But when you meditate on the word, it will automatically sweat out of your pores. Yeah. You know how anything they say, anything that you eat becomes a part of you? Uh -huh. Same with the word. Anything that you meditate on, might put your mindset on, eventually your words, it will become that way. That's right. Amen. Okay? So, you must be careful to do everything in it. Must be careful to do. Which means once I start meditating on it, that means my actions will soon to follow. Yes. Then I will be prosperous and successful. As I said before, God has really been getting me on this about good success or bad success. How do we get there? First of all, we have to have our mindset on God. After we put our mindset and our words begin to follow, then our actions, and then we have good success. Why does he tell us to do this? I have not commanded you to be strong and courageous. Remember that you are an enemy with the world, which means peer pressure. Peer pressure means that mostly everyone else is going the wide road and you going the narrow road. Oh, come on, which Jim. means that you sometimes will be caught in a, in a tight place of doing what God tells you to do when no one else is doing it. You will sometimes have to stand alone. It tells you to be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. This is the promise. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but faith, love, and a what? Sound mind. The world will say that you are crazy for following the things of God. If you look on social media, 
everything on social media goes mostly goes against what God is saying to do. They're calling black, white, and white, black. Uh -huh. We are now in those days. There also is going to be a falling away. So you do not be afraid and don't get discouraged. For I, the Lord, will be with you wherever you go. So you are really not alone. Even though you may seem like there's no one with you, God is with you. Yes, he is. That is his promise. Hold on to that when you're falling under peer pressure. Okay? Because there are many things that come against us. Beware of the siren. The siren is attractive to the eyes, the ears, and the heart. Because it tugs at the flesh. Everything has been distracted to cause you to follow the ways of the flesh. So how do we fortify ourselves? James 1, 5 and 8. If any of you are lacking wisdom, when I'm under peer pressure, a lot of times people make bad decisions because they don't have wisdom. Mm -hmm. They're listening to the siren's call because I, they don't have the wisdom to shut it off. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have wisdom in the area, the Lord tells me to ask and he will give it to me. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. God will find fault when you ask. There's no such thing as a stupid question with God. God will answer us when we ask Amen. with a willing heart, and it will be given. But when you ask, you must what? Believe and not doubt, because the one that doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. You notice how um, th in this day and age, a celebrity, when uh, mom and I was talking about a celebrity, she started wearing pajamas and then everybody else thought it was okay to wear pajamas outside. Mm -hmm. it's not. Tossed to and fro, fashion trends that we call them. And what is happening is that Satan is preparing the mind to worship the Antichrist when he yes, comes. Yes. Again, we're talking about peer pressure. Peer pressure when you're doing everything everybody else is doing, most likely it's the wrong thing to do anyway. Amen. Okay, I'll repeat that again. When you're doing everything else, mostly everybody else is doing, it's most likely the wrong thing because Satan is programming your mind to worship the wrong thing. Yes, sir. You're Amen. going to worship something. You're either going to worship God yes. or you're going to worship Satan. Yes. Peer pressure is of Satan. Accountability is of God. They are counterweights of the other. So, if I'm away, tossed to and fro, then that person will not receive anything from God. That means that you will be persuaded. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in everything they do. Have you ever met someone that tells you one thing and then an hour later they change their mind and then two hours later they change their mind to something else? Yeah. It's because they're unstable. Yeah. They're not, they don't have a purpose or a vision. You have a purpose and a vision when you become saved, but you can get distracted from it. Yeah. Again, through peer pressure. What is pressure? The use of intimidation, persuasion to do against something you would not normally do. All right. How do we know the difference when we're in a crowd? Let's say you're in a crowd of people, teenagers, and you really don't know if these people are legit or not. Well, the word gives us that answer, too. You turn to James, and this is why I'm going to stop. You turn to James chapter 3. And let's look at some characteristics. Now, there are two types of wisdom. There's good wisdom and bad wisdom. We're going to see it here in James 3. James 3 and 13. All right. Two kinds of wisdom. Now, Let's say I want to find out if this is legit. This person's legit. And what I mean by legit, saved, knows God. Who is 
is wisdom? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life. So that means that when you meet someone, you shouldn't just automatically reciprocate. You need to wait and check their fruit out first. Yes, yes. Okay, let's do this again. Let's say you have an overripe fruit in the kitchen. And you got a good piece of fruit. You know after a while you keep them together, what happens to them? Both of them come overripe, right? But that's over time, it's a process. So that means that when you're meeting someone, and this is keeping you out of peer pressure too, because if, if you're discerning of your friends, then you will not, because the Bible says iron sharpens iron. So if I meet people that are godly, then I'm going to sharpen myself. But I have to wait to see over time, to see what their actions are. Yes. Okay? Good? See what their actions are. So to let them show it by their good life, by their deeds in humility that come from wisdom. Mm -hmm. Now, check out verse 14. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast of it or deny the truth. So remember, that, uh, that's a saying that says that people rise to their own level. So if I have things in my heart that are not right, then I'm going to attract other people with those same attributes. Mm -hmm. So God is always telling us to check our heart. God, our heart, check our heart, because we attract people with that same level. Yes, yes. We attract people with that same level. You may not like them, what I'm saying, but it is it's the truth. So if we harbor envy and selfish ambition, don't boast of it or deny the truth. In other words, I need to make sure if I got this, Lord, remove it from me. For such wisdom does not come from heaven. Now, the world has wisdom too. Well, I need to test drive this first. So I'm gonna go ahead and live with her for a couple of a couple of months. We're gonna live like us and want to make sure this thing gonna work. That's, t that's, that's wisdom, that's the wisdom of the world. Girl, don't, get, don't do that, no, you gotta make sure that stuff's right first. Go on, shack up. Okay? That's, that's wisdom of the world too. The wisdom of the world is earth, earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Now, man, I can go ahead and give you a few answers on this test. You just put the answer between your fingers. Devilish and, un and unspiritual. For when you have envy and selfish ambition, think about school, school culture. How many people can say, and don't 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 raise your hand, uh, children, think about your school culture when you're out in the hallway. Is it chaotic, disorderly? Everybody all everywhere. No one's truly going where they're supposed to be going. You know, you're supposed to be on the right, going to the right or the left. Very few people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. When you see that, you have disorder in every evil practice. So as I'm going down the hall, we can say that most of our schools are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. You are few among many. Keep your light burning. So this is what you need to do. And you go against that type of environment that you know is this kind, this disorderly, ruling, and has every evil practice. Ask for wisdom that comes from heaven first. What is the wisdom from heaven? It's first going to be pure. Pure in thought, pure in deed. It's going to be peace loving. It's going to be considerate and not rude. It's going to be submissive to authority. It's going to be full of mercy for people that have need. And it's going to be a good fruit. What are the good fruits? The fruits of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
long-suffering. If you have friends that have these same attributes, you won't have to worry about peer pressure. You have to worry about accountability, but peer pressure will not be one of them. Yes, Impartial and sincere. Peacemakers that sow in peace will reap a harvest of righteousness. Peer pressure is real. It is, in, it is in our society. It is of the Antichrist. It's going to cause people to worship the Antichrist. And if you notice, every trend that comes through, people actually worshiping movie stars, rock stars, rap stars, they follow them like a siren. I need you to go against the siren call. I need you to be different. I need you to stand and be strong and courageous. I need you to know the difference between good wisdom and bad wisdom. So I'm going to repeat this good wisdom one last time before I sit down. Wisdom from heaven is first pure, pure in motive and deed. Peace loving. Think about the ones that you're not at peace with. Figure out how to be at peace with them. It's considerate. It's not rude. It's submissive to authority. I'm not saying authority to tell you to jump out of bridge, but the, if they tell you to move to the right side of the hallway, be submissive. Yes. Yeah. Full of mercy. Full of mercy. People that are not in need. Don't bully uh, students. Students that sit alone, do you sit with them? Mm. Of good fruit, peace, joy, long suffering, kindness, gentleness. It's impartial, it's fair, and also love is sincere. If you find friends that have these attributes, peer pressure will not be yours. Also, do not go into friendships quickly. Check to see what their fruits are first. If it's an overripe fruit, you're going to become overripe. But if it's a ripe fruit and both of you are at the same stage, then you will be okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am just truly excited about being here today and what God is doing in this place. Uh, would you go to enter prayer with me, please? Heavenly Father, we just glorify you. We thank you for what you're going to do here today, Lord God. You've already started with my sister before me, Lord God. I just ask that you continue to open their hearts and minds of the people that are here. Lord God, let this word fall on good ground, Lord God. We ask that this be a, a change and a stirring on the inside of each and every team that's present here today, Lord God. They will leave here not the same way they came in the building, Father. We thank you right now, Father, for what you're going to do and what's going to take place. Lord God, I decrease that you might increase. And we just give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. We are talking about pressures of life. I'm just, I just want to say once again, you do not know how blessed you are to have pastors who are concerned about your well-being. In a society where people are constantly looking at the outside, worrying about if your hair look good, if you got on the right clothes, if you have on uh, the latest and the greatest tennis shoe, and your inside is junky and nasty, and you are not a believer, it means nothing. Nothing. You can have on the most expensive pair of tennis shoes, but you're not on your way to heaven. I want y'all to know, young people, that y'all die too. Y'all die too. It doesn't mean that you get old and you die. The Word of God said a disobedient child will not live his days out upon this earth. We see it happening every day. That's why mothers are crying because they didn't realize their children were going to die before them. That's not exactly what we desire. But today we're talking about the pressures of life. Those pressures to get you to do things that you normally would not have done or wouldn't you. 
Because if you fall to the place and allow someone else's idea to be your idea, what ideas do you have? What ideas do you have? Let's turn to Psalms 119, and I will be reading it to your hearing verses 9 and 11 from the New Living Translation. And how can a person stay pure? By obeying your word. The word of God. Not what you believe. Not what you think is okay. Not about what everybody else is doing. Because I just heard on this week, and I'm, I'm going to be just as candid as possible, because everything you need. I was sitting and listening to some people talk about it being okay that your child go in and be a part of uh, homosexuality. It's not okay. It's not okay. Why is it not okay? Because God says it's not okay. God says it's not okay. It's not your mama. It's not the people at your church. We're not just ganging up on you. The word of God says it's an abomination. It's not the only thing that's an abomination. But to love someone of the same sex is wrong. Because God created us to be fruitful and to multiply. You cannot be fruitful and multiply with the same sex. Amen. But the lady said, it's okay. Her daughter told her, it's okay because everybody doing it. Oh, that's a pressure. That's a pressure. It is one you're not handling. Because you ain't got complacent with it. You're okay with it because you say, oh, it's people in my family like, it's people like that in my family too. But what I'm doing, I'm praying that they be delivered, that they not live that way, because you can't go to heaven living that lifestyle. Okay? So we're talking about pressures here today. Pressures. I'll go back to that scripture. It says, how can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. First of all, you cannot obey your word if you don't know what the word says. Many of you are not even taking your Bibles. Y'all don't bring them to church. I know you have Bibles. You don't even pick them up when you're at home. But I bet you've been on Facebook. Maybe not Facebook, but social media. I say that because I'm not up on the social media. And it's a trick. You go in just to check one little thing. You're sitting there and you want to make sure that you are checking one little thing. That check only was supposed to take about maybe three, four seconds. You end up being on there for three, four, five hours. Just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Yeah, it ain't even found that. Just going up, just going up, down, up, down, looking at stuff. It's a distraction. But it's a pressure because everybody is doing it. Remember, the straight and narrow is not going to be everybody. It's not going to be everybody. It's not going to be what everybody else is doing. It's not going to be what everybody else is saying. Ten, I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. You ain't got no word in your heart. So you can't fight a godly battle. The only way this battle is going to be won is by the word of God. You can scream. You can yell. You can have a physical altercation. Nobody wins. Nobody wins a physical altercation. The only way you're going to win is by the word. But you can't win unless you know the word. That's why so many times kids are being tripped up. And it's our kids who come in the sanctuary every Sunday. People say, oh no, I know they don't go to church. I know they don't go to church. You see how they act? It's hurtful to hear that you're coming into the sanctuary day in and day out and you're leaving. The same way. You need to start praying and asking the Lord, Lord, help me to hear a word from you today. Lord, I don't want to continue to live this way. 
I don't want to continue to keep doing these things. I don't want to keep following the path that everybody else is going down. Because I know it's wrong. We don't have to tell you what's wrong. No. You know it's wrong. Because first of all, you hide to do it. You sneak it. You go over there and stand by the door. Step, look, look, look and see if somebody coming. Because I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do this. It's an attack from the enemy. It's the truth. Amen. But you feel like you want to be like everybody else. Everybody else not doing it because I promise you, there's some godly teens out here. There's some kids who love God enough, they're not going to do it. I can give you a prime example. I was at a school and they had a dance for their students. All the kids was out there and they were busting it down. One little boy standing on the wall. He refused to go out there and get with him. He refused. Amen. Everybody else was, oh, they was doing it. They was cutting it up. <laughs> but he refused. You can stand for God. Yes. And you must. You must stand for God. I have a picture. Okay. Hopefully y'all can see it, but I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to define uh, peer pressure. This beautiful uh, picture that I have, I didn't create it, I found, and I loved it. It's by Chris uh, Drew. Uh, it says, peer pressure is the influence exerted by a peer group encouraging individuals to change their attitudes, values, or behavior That's right. to conform to group norms. Y'all, mm -hmm. your attitude change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're not living a godly life, that's when you start talking ugly to your mom, mm -hmm. to your daddy, to those people who are working hard for you. That's when you don't even have a, a, a moment of inkling on the inside of you when you say something bad. You just act like she deserved it. She got what she deserved. That's because you're following bad behavior. Just like my sister said. My students know because I made it like a song. Evil communication corrupts good manners. I said it so often till they started repeating it to me. She know because she was in my class when I was saying it. And they still come back to me and say it. So you cannot say you don't know it. When we learn better, we have to do better. Amen. When you learn how to do a math problem the right way, that you've been doing the wrong, the wrong way for so long. When it's time for the test, do you go back to the old way to get the problem wrong? No. You do it right. So that's why we come into the sanctuary, so that we can learn how to handle those pressures, those things that's coming against us with the Word of God. He went on to say the examples he gave, academic performance. There's, we know that there's always a godly and there's always a demonic. There's always two options. Yes, no. Per academic performance. Friends can motivate each other to study harder and achieve better grades. That's true. Sometimes you have friends who, if you don't know how to do it, well, call me. I'm going to help you Amen. learn how to do that. That's, that's a good pressure. That's someone who loves you and they're willing to. But if somebody don't ever offer to help you do something, and they know how to do it. Y'all need to be paying attention. My sister said, you need to be checking the fruit that you're dealing with. Because if you sit back, they may be on a roll. You're not. They on the dean's list. But you're not. And they've never said one thing to you about, you need to bring your grades up. Okay. It said fashions and trends. Young people can feel pressure to conform to current styles or trends popular with their friend groups. 
It's, it's not supposed to be. We're not supposed to be showing our everything. Your sunshine, your smiles and looses and whatever you want to call them. But there are some groups who tell you I can wear what I want to wear. They put extra holes in places that when they bought the outfit, they didn't have it there. Mm -hmm. I've seen them do it. And they will convince you, oh, girl, it ain't nothing. Just go and do it. Did you do it? Don't say nothing. Don't ask a question. <laughs> Environmental consciousness. Peers can influence you, each other, to adopt eco-friendly habits like recycling. Have y'all ever been in a class where they had a recycling bin and they had a trash can? When you went to the trash can, you started looking at the little things that were supposed to go in the recycle bin and you put the things that were supposed to go in the trash can. So we conform to things in this world. But we have a scripture about conforming to things. Let's go to Romans 12. Uh -huh. And one. Yes. Yeah. And it reads, yes. and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you that you give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Nobody can see your worship. It's what's on the inside of you. But God knows your worship. You can put on your little show when you come in this sanctuary like you're doing everything, but God knows exactly what you're doing. Because every time you do those bad things, you take him with you. When you decide to go and do and meet with Johnny around the corner or meet with Lucy around the corner, you took him with you. And he said, when you decide to put something up to your lips that's not supposed to be ingested, alcohol, drugs, pills, whatever it may be, you took it with you. You're not supposed to be doing anything that's ungodly. Amen. But if you're not meditating on God, you're going to be easily persuaded away. That's right. You're not reading your word. You're not praying. You're not fellowshipping with the body like you should. Amen. You're not listening to sound doctrine. But y'all listening to them ungodly people. They leading y'all to the ditches. They leading you astray away from the things of God. And you're going in droves. Droves. But that's why we're here today. Two. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Yes, that's right. Hallelujah. Three, because of the privilege the authority God has given me. I give each of you this warning. Don't think you're better than you really are. Wow. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves. Yeah. Wait a minute, pause right there. You have to check yourself. You don't have to wait till Sister Zandra said. How do I check myself with the word of God? With the word of God. It tells us to study and show ourselves approved. That's right. That's Find out if you're a workman of God or not. Yeah. But you have to check yourself. Because we have indicators on the inside of us telling us when we out of line. You're screaming and yelling. You over there taking the, the puff. You over there wrapped up with the girl. And you a girl. Or you wrapped up with a boy and you a boy. 
You, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get with my boyfriend this time. You out of line? Because everything that you have belongs to God. And sex is not for children. It was made for grown adults who are married adults. But when people choose sin as their choice, there are repercussions. I sung it like a song when the name was little. When my kids would get in a car, every child that ever got in a car of mine can recite that to you. Because I made sure I repeated it to them every time that they knew that sex was not ordained for children. Nor grown people, only married people. Put it in your heads right now. See, because when you get ready to call yourself to try to step out of line, you're going to hear my voice. Yes. You're going to hear it. Because yes. you ain't going to be able not to hear it. Yes. You're going to remember me saying what I just said, and you're going to be hearing it in your head. Woo! Woo. <laughs> I know because they told me that's what happened. <clears throat> they told me that's what happened. Some of the young people who I've been in and been in their lives, they said, I couldn't do nothing. So Miss Sandra? Yes. I tried to do such and such. I tried to go take that drink. All I could hear you saying was, oh, that ain't no God. <laughs> Kids have made fun of me for the past 20 years or plus, maybe. But you know what? It show up. It show up. Because when people love you, they tell you the truth. Yeah. See, all that stuff out there in the world, they lying. They love you, they tell you the truth. They lying because you know why? Because the enemy wants you to go with him. He's trying to steal, yes. kill, and destroy you. Yes. How can I do that? By getting in your thoughts. By getting you to believe the lie. Because all he can do is lie. That's all. That's all he can do is lie. Amen. I have a question. And it's open. What, and I'll take a couple if you want to share. What are some experiences you've had with peer pressure? See, because first you got to admit you had it. You can't just walk around and say, oh, no, I don't do what other people do. Not so. Well, you can think in your mind, you don't have to say it out loud. But if you can't admit to yourself, then yeah, I follow someone. That wasn't right. I knew it wasn't right. But I did it because everybody else was doing it. I said it because everybody else was saying it. I didn't want them to think that I was uh, all, like Pastor Bob say, I was Moses or Sarah. Come on now. And I ain't want nobody to say nothing, uh, pick on me and say, you know, and not be my friend. Who want a friend who gonna cause them to do something that make your God say it? I make you have a bad relationship. Right, right, amen. Ooh. Amen. Are they your friends? They're not your friend. So y'all need to be look back and reevaluate who your friends are. Who are your friends? In verse 3 of Romans 12, the bottom said, be honest in your evaluation of yourselves. Measure yourselves by the faith God has given us. In the beginning, he's given us all a little bit. I don't know if you ever seen the mustard seed. It's, little. it's a little bit of seed. But your seed's supposed to grow. It don't supposed to be minute for the rest of your life. It's supposed to grow. But the only way it can grow is that you trust and believe in God. And what he says is true. And it shall come to pass. Some things you can't see it right now. Because he shared things to us in parts. But when we believe God for those things, we trust him. I may not see it today, but I trust you, Lord. Because there's nothing that you would do to me to harm me. But the other people on the other side of the road that's pretending to be your friends, they'll lead you to places. We got kids who are coming up missing because they invite you to a party and it's a setup. They setting you up. That's right, man. So don't be so quick to jump to the crowd. Watch the videos. Because they videotape. 
The things that they do to the girls and the boys who come to the party, they jump on them. They pull their hair out. Some of everybody, it's a plan from the enemy to get you there and everybody. Sometimes our girls get raped because they have a whole bunch of boys in the back at the house waiting for you. So don't be so quick to call people your friends and you had not even tested it with the word. To find out if they are believers or not. You're following things that are taking you to a place that you don't have to be. Amen. When the pressures of life overwhelm us. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. And I'm about to come to a close. Right. And I will be reading to you verses 3 and 5. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. Guys, you're going to have problems. You're going to have trials. As long as you live here, that's the enemy's job against the believers, the saints of God. Because when he look at us, he don't see us. He see Jesus. And he has a war attack. That he has against Jesus. That's right. Amen. Praise so even when you call yourself accepting Christ and you're going and playing over there, he know that you said it. He know that you go to church on Sunday. He watching. But he will expose it. He said when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they are good for us. How are my problems and trials going to be good for me? It's getting that junk on the outside of us. It's pulling up all that stuff and putting it away. He said, they help us learn to endure, to us to develop endurance. Because now you know how to stand in a war. That's right. Say you know to call on you know your father. Do it. That's right. You know to humble yourself and say, Lord, help me. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Here I stand crying out. Yeah. I need your help. Yeah. Four. And the endurance develops strength of character. Yeah. Yeah. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Young people, we want you to know if you follow the why. Conform to those pressures and allow those pressures that people are trying to get you in too. There are going to be some disappointments. There are going to be some things that you're going to have to give account for because there's consequences. Thank you. Just have a few words to say. The reason for this youth and young adult Bible study is to help you all recognize sin. Yes. Yes. We want you to recognize it so that you can win. Yes. We don't want you to lose. Satan has taken too many of our children and our young adults. And we're trying to encourage you to live up to God's standards. Yes. Amen. How many of you think this is beneficial to you? You may hear some things, I don't really want to hear that. But we want you to win in life. Amen. And unless you embrace the things of God, you're going to be just like so many others out there whom the devil has convinced, live my way. Mm. Get on the wide road. Mm. You're going to be okay. No, you're not going to be okay. Amen. We've seen so many of our friends yes. who've gotten hooked on drugs. Help us, Lord. Had Father. children, after, child after child, no place to live. 
because they followed the enemy's way. So this is a challenge, and I hope you're being blessed by it. I'm going to ask for a show of hands. Are you being blessed by these Bible Hallelujah. studies? Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! Amen. Everybody raise their hand. And we're going to continue this. We don't have a whole lot here today, but look, I thank God for the ones yeah. who are here. If we can save one from the clutches of the enemy, then we've done good. We've done good. And I'm looking at all of you out there, every one of you. Dylan, Emery, Tiana, Kennedy, Tootie, and Tootie, yes. and James, and Ariel, and Michael. Yes. We don't want to lose any of you. <laughs> so we're going to continue this until God tells us to do otherwise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I praise God for all of the leaders here because it's going to take all of us to get these children to a safe place. Yes. Hallelujah. So that they're rooted and grounded in the things of God so that when they hear the enemy talking in their ear, the Bible says another voice, a stranger's voice, we're not going to follow that Hallelujah. voice. You want me to do something wrong? No, I'm not going to follow that voice. Thank you, Lord. Thank because you. I know what the Word of God says. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Can I get somebody who's bold enough to say something today from this youth ministry? Are you learning anything? Is there something that you want to say that just truly blessed you? Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the pastors and Spiritual Harvest because some young people nowadays really don't know. And I'm seeing people around me, other people my age, I'm 14 and I'm seeing other people younger than me and around my age do stuff that they're not really supposed to do. Yeah. And I look at them and wonder what's going on at home? Is their mom, dad teaching them anything? Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what mom teaches me. Mm -hmm. And I just look around and I see everything. So I just want to say thank you again for taking the time out of their day, week to teach us and guide us on the right path so yes. we don't end up like those other yes. 13, 14, 15, older, younger teenagers that are out I like this event very much, this team gathering this afternoon. We're learning about the pressures of life yes. and what what to do and what not to do. Right. What's right from wrong. Leslie teaches me that every day. Papa, Mama, love them very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I heard that we shouldn't follow nobody just because they come to their friends and let them Peer pressure us to do something that we know we wouldn't do if you weren't in the position we are, we were in at this time. Amen. 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 Very good. Just because they say you're a friend, they're your friend. I don't know what they say, dude. For the ones who weren't able to say anything, we know that they're still processing. But I remember when I was about their age yeah. and going through those pressures of life. And so many things wouldn't have happened in our lives had we had people who would have took more time. And we love you enough to take the time because we want you not to have to go through those things. We know that you're going to have trials and tribulations in your life, but we want you not to believe the enemy that don't nobody love you because we do love you. So that's a lie. When you hear that don't nobody love you, we love you. That's the main reason that people commit suicide because they think nobody loves them. And that's not true because we love each and every one of you. Sometimes we're hard on you. Yes, it's because we love you and we want the best for you. But we just thank God for each and every one of you. And I just wanted you to know that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you thanks, Lord God, for the youth 
and the young adults in this church. We thank you, Lord God, that you are raising up the next generation to be mighty warriors for Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that we don't mind making the sacrifice, Lord God, to teach them how to recognize sin and the deceitful, evil ways of the enemy. We thank you, Lord God, that they're growing in faith and they're moving out in the things of God. You get all of the praise and you get all of the glory. Father, we thank you for traveling grace as we leave this place, but never your presence. We thank you, Lord God, that your word dwells richly on the inside of us in all wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.
Spiritual Harvest Ministries, building the spirit man for Christ, one person at a time.